everybody. Let's get right into it. Five myths about menstruation that we are going to bust today. But before we get started, please make sure to like and subscribe. Way too many people are ill-informed about menstruation and about what they can and can't do and how to live their best lives and actually fall in love with their periods. It's not crazy. It's actually normal to love your period and to love every single menstrual phase. There's four of them that we go through. I went from hating and absolutely being terrified, honestly, for 10 days of the month because of the PMS and the period pain to falling in love with it. You can too, subscribe and like so that you can learn how to do that. But let's get into the myths. So the first myth is that it is unsafe to use birth control or to skip periods. That is absolutely false. It is safe to use birth control and to skip your periods. Unfortunately, the definition of safety is flawed. While something is safe, it doesn't mean that it should necessarily be practiced. For example, it is safe to walk in an area that has a lot of pollution. The long-term effects of living in an area that has a lot of pollution are disastrous. So while it is safe, it doesn't mean we should do it. Birth control is useful for people who are using birth control to control birth, to keep from getting pregnant. It is what the name describes. That said, if you are using birth control not for birth control, if you're using birth control because you have menstrual imbalance, menstrual disorders, irregular periods, and you want to try to mitigate cramps, you want to try to have a normal life with a period that happens on schedule, then instead of trying to force your womb, like th this is really what birth control does. It essentially is like taking a, I'll use my dog. It's like taking my dog who sometimes wants to be picked up and sometimes doesn't. When he doesn't want to be picked up, he moves about very, very quickly and he's like flailing and he's trying to get out of my hold because he doesn't want to be there. He wants to do what he wants to do. And if he doesn't want to be picked up, it's because he needs something else. He doesn't need to be picked up. He doesn't need to be controlled. Well, same thing for your womb. When your womb is irregular, when your womb is screaming in pain via cramps, that is because there is something wrong and the womb needs to be nurtured in a certain way. Some hole needs to be filled. And instead of punishing your womb by saying, no, you'll do it my way, we listen to our womb to find out what is compelling the irregularity. When we use the four menstrual phases and when we look to nurture our womb and to accommodate and encourage our womb and our way of being in those four distinct ways over the course of our period cycle, we will find that the, the cramps stop and that our cycle does get regular. Very basic interventions like resting in the right ways for your body, your holistic body, okay? That's the intuitive, the physical, the emotional from the left and the mental from the right. When you give your body what it needs as it needs it, and there are ways to listen to it, and that's what we do in the collective, and that's what we do at Steady and Free. When you address it that way, you don't need birth control. You don't need supplements to be normal because you end up actually living in your normal, which is complementary, not the same, but complementary to the normal of people who were born without a uterus. It's a whole world of difference. And at the same time, when we live and thrive in that world of difference, it makes, it actually supports and uplifts our entire world. Think of a triangle. If I am this side of the triangle, I need this side to complement my energy, not to be like my energy. If I try to be like this side of the triangle, I have no balance. It flattens, it drops. And so let's not do that, right? So birth control is great. Birth control is safe as long as you're using birth control for exactly what its use is, to control birth. If you're using it to mask symptoms of menstrual disorder, it is safe. And at the same time, you're going to pay a huge cost on, in the long term. The second myth is that women should not shower while menstruating. Menstruation is literally the allowing, the releasing of the menstrual lining, of the uterine, the uteral lining. It is releasing it because it is no longer needed in the body. That is a release, that is a shedding. The same way that we wash off 
what no longer serves because our body is constantly releasing things that it no longer needs. We've got these lovely um, repositories in our glands, our lymph nodes, when we're sweating, especially happening here, especially happening in the groin. Those are places of release. And yes, you can, so you wanna aid the release by taking a shower and that's happening on the inside. It's, there's nothing to fear when you shower while menstruating. In fact, I, you can take a bath while you're menstruating and you will not be bathing in your menstrual lining because of osmosis. The menstrual lining will stay in while you're bathing and you will not, like you're, well, unless you have extremely heavy flow, in which case then um, because of osmosis, the higher density will move to the lower density and it will flow out. So maybe not taking a bath. If you are still suffering from menstrual disorder and are dealing with heavy flows, you wanna take care of yourself, get yourself to mild to light flows. That happens through living in menstrual alignment, through nurturing your womb to menstrual order, and you will be able to take a bath if that's something that's important to you. So yes, you can absolutely shower while you are menstruating. Before we get to the third myth that we're going to bust, I invite you to think about what the world would be like if we were not experiencing any menstrual disorders that, were, that needed to be relieved. So what if instead of going, do I have enough ibuprofen for my period that's coming in the next week? We didn't have to worry about where our ibuprofen is because we are not experiencing cramps. Well, that's possible when we treat the causes instead of the symptoms. Treating the symptoms gives us temporary relief because we're not stopping the production of the thing that causes the symptoms. Treating the causes stops the causes and therefore stops the symptoms. To treat the causes is to live in menstrual alignment. How can I say that? How can that be true? Well, I did a white paper about the science behind why the Fierce Gentleness Framework, which is the framework that is dedicated to ending menstrual suffering without special diet, special exercise, uh, supplements, gut therapy, hormone therapy, functional health, all of that. We relieve the menstrual disorders. We also relieve the turbulence that comes with perimenopause and menopause because we are working in alignment. I have worked with people at all levels of menopause and people with all levels of severity of menstrual disorder and treating the causes calms all of it. The body only communicates with you out of pain and out of disruptive ways of being because it can't be heard in any other way. The body whispers before it screams. You can bring things back to a whisper or you can bring things back to complete peace by treating the causes, not the symptoms. And I invite you to click the link to read our white paper because you not only get access to our white paper, which is the science behind why the Fierce Gentleness Framework works and why you no longer have to be a walking experiment, constantly going from relief to relief to relief, all temporary, to getting to live in peace, in thriving, in easeful impact. You also get access to our email list where you can receive really cool tips every week about ways that you can engage in your easeful impact living and start getting to menstrual order. Okay, so our third myth, periods sync with other women. Now this is really cool. Technically, the period does not sync with other women. Technically, technically it doesn't. And yet, I went to an all women's college for university and we called it the Crimson Wave and the wave would move around the house. It would move, there were about, mm, let me see, two floors, 100 women, so 50 women on each floor. And the wave would move in circles around the house. So most of us lived close to people that we enjoyed being around. And so we'd live in close quarters with them. We'd spend our time with them. We'd have every meal with them. We'd do our homework with them. We'd go to the library with them. We'd do, even do activities with them. So as these pods were together, they would, we would end up getting our periods at the same time. And then as the people who were part of two groups, there with these people, they would then, you know, we would all sync up. And it wasn't all the floors would have the period at the same time, but it would move in this wave, a literal wave, like doing the wave at a basketball game. So technically, no, because there's no scientific evidence, but there's not a lot of scientific evidence for a lot of things. So technically, no, periods do not sync with other women, and yes, they do, anecdotally speaking. And another um, way to think about this is that back in the biblical ages, um, Annie Lamont, she wrote a book called The Red Tent, 
it was very normal for all of the women all at the same time to get their period and they would all go to the red tent. They would all be in there at the same time. And there was this periodic pause in the workflow of life because all of the women were in the red tent because they were synced up. It wasn't like, oh, just you, oh, just you. No, they were synced up because they lived together, they worked together, they'd be together. So 